Okay, my name is Bob Foster, and I'm going to have a short video on what I think is a, a very powerful feature of the IBM PowerEight servers that very few customers and IBMers themselves even know about. So, to give you a little background, live partition mobility is something that's been around since 2008 in our product line, and it really um, was a, a, a feature that our customers exploited a lot and helped them um, um, to get a lot more flexibility with uh, using these servers and uh, with the live partition mobility they could do maintenance a lot easier and, and they could migrate from one uh, uh, architecture to another like they bought a P6 and they bought P7 they could just migrate their workloads from P6 to P7 and uh, they could do workload balancing so live partition mobility has been an important uh, feature of our product line for quite a while. But, you know, if you have an unplanned outage, which is uh, IBM speak for your server crashed, um, you can get those partitions back up and running on another server. So your server's crashed. I like to give the example, you know, you, the server got thrown out the window. It's crashed down to the street below. It's, uh, you know, on fire and cables are dangling out of the server window. And that server is obviously in very bad shape. Well, you can get those partitions back up and running on another server in just a matter of minutes. You don't have to wait for IBM to get this, that server back online. You don't have to worry for IBM support to even call you back. You don't have to wait at all. You just restart that workload on the other servers and get your business back up and running in minutes. I mean, this is a fantastic feature here. And as I try to go forward, this feature is called Simplified Remote Restart. Now, this is a... Uh, a PowerVM Enterprise uh, feature, and it allows you to restart your LPM-capable LPARs on another server. So that means you've already implemented LPM in your data center, and with LPM partitions, they can also be simplified remote restarted. And you can restart it on a server in your, in your data center, or if you configure it for cross-site LPM, you can restart these LPARs on another server in another data center uh, while the first data center is completely offline. So this is actually an extremely important feature. Your server crashes, you can restart things in a matter of minutes. So how hard is it to implement this? Well, you just have to click a box on the HMC and it's implemented. So it's nothing. It's, it's, uh, it's cake to implement this feature. So let me give you some uh, examples of why I think you might want this a little bit more. So, so this is what I call a phone call. Uh, that uh, between maybe your admin and the boss and so the boss calls up or the admin calls a boss and says hello boss We just lost a p8 frame and it crashed and I've called IBM support and they're on their way The boss goes oh my goodness which application are affected and how long does IBM think it's going to take to get the server back up? Well, the admin says I've already restarted our most critical partitions and now I'm restarting our lower part priority partitions It shouldn't be long now The boss goes remote restarted. I thought we could only LPM when the server is up yeah, says the admin, this SRR is like LPM, but for when the servers crash. The boss goes, well, okay. Once the SSR fixes the server, call me, and then we'll start to move those running partitions back over to the failed server. The admin goes, no problem. So this is actually how we like our data centers to run. If we do have to have a crash, we want to get things back up and running pretty quickly. So that's a great you know, scenario highlighting the benefit of Simplified Remote Restart. So let's now have the same phone call, but we don't have Simplified Remote Restart enabled on this server. So the admin calls up, hello boss, we lost a P8 frame, it's crashed and I've called IBM support and they're on their way. The boss asks which applications are affected and how long will the server be down? The admin says, well that server hosts some web servers for our social media sites and our payment system and our new Samsung launch app developers are uh, not able to work on their code, and so the repair time is DVD. The boss goes, oh my gosh, we can't pay folks, and now our new cell phone launch is only one week away, and our developers are already behind, we need this server up fast. So, you know, a lot of phone calls happen during the day, and the server finally comes back up online. So now we go forward in time, and uh, now we have the, 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 um, the phone call that we always have after a server crashes between the customer and IBM. And of course, it's got lots of people on the phone call. And in this case, we'll um, have the, uh, the VP in charge of IT from the customers on the call either also. So IBM says, well, we've done an analysis of the failure and understand its nature and it won't happen again. And the customer VPs, 
we need to have some way to mitigate this in the future. Well, IBM comes back, well, you could have been able to simplify remote restart and just move those workloads to your other server. And the customer VP says, well, what do I need to get this simplified remote restart? IBM says, well, you've had this capability on your boxes since day one. And the customer VP, of course, is now thinking, hmm, that's interesting. Now, what do I need to do to enable this? Well, you need to shut down all your partitions again and set this bin on each LPAR and restart. The customer VP says, I have to shut down all those LPARs that just crashed last week and the, enable this feature now? Well, you can imagine how the rest of that conversation is going to go after that phone call. So let's talk a little bit more about Simplified Remote Restart. I have talked to customers around the world about this, and um, I, I, I'm sometimes I get lukewarm um, response from the customers. And so this is sort of what I think customers are thinking when they hear about this. And so I've put a few things on a chart here. So first thing, the customer said, well, all my production LPARs are clustered, so failover will work. Well, that's great. You should cluster all your production LPARs. Um, that's great. But, you know, sometimes uh, the failover doesn't work. And, in fact, I talked to a customer a few weeks ago, and this had been the situation. The app developers had hard-coded up some addresses and other configura configuration information, and they couldn't get that help. They couldn't get the failover to start right, and so they actually had to wait for that ser that first server to be repaired before they get that application back up and tested, or back up and running. And then, of course, a lot of customers don't test their failover, so you think you have failover, but will it really work? Or I hear the other uh, comment: Well, you know, my non-product workload can be down during an unplanned outage, and I don't really quite believe that. At least the customers I talk to. Uh, they tell me that the non-prod is uh, the new prod. So that means they can't take it down. I say, how come you haven't updated your firmware on the HMC or updated your VLS? Well, that's got uh, my non-prod on it. Well, great. Non-prod isn't important. Oh, no, no. A non-prod is so important. I can't even get downtime to, to you know, uh, update the firmware for my non-prod servers. So um, I'm not quite buying that people's non-prod can be down. And then I also have customers that have uh, developers working on the non-prod LPARs a lot. You know, they're trying to get ready for new uh, launches of new applications and, uh, you know, new products, and they need to have the, their back end all ready for orders and such like that. And um, so those uh, non-prod LPARs, uh, uh, when they go down, you have lots of developers sitting around not doing anything. And then, of course, uh, non-prod is really clustered in customer environment. So, you know, people don't protect their non-prod very much. But with SRR, you could get that back from running. Then another one I hear is I don't have enough spare resources to SRR or a failed server. Well, you don't have to restart all the LPARs from a failed server. You know, if you had a couple of important LPARs on a server that crashed and you need to get those back up and running, I guarantee you, you would figure out something to shut down somewhere to get those more important ones back up and running. So, you know, I think SRR is something you might as well enable. You don't have to ever use it, but, you know, you might as well enable it. There are two types of remote restart, and I want to bring this up because it is a little confusing. There's a remote restart that was back on Power 7, which is the top. And there's this remote restart, simplified remote restart, which is the bottom bullet that came out on Power 8 on the 820 firmware. So it's been out since December of 2014. And let me just show you another chart that how you can look at it. Here is what, when you look on HMC at the capabilities of a server, you can actually, there's three types of remote restart now on your server. There's the two ones on the top and the one on the bottom that I've highlighted with the blue box around it. That's the capability you want on your P8 server. If that is not set to true, you're probably running on 810 server firmware or you don't have the PowerVM Enterprise Edition. So uh, you should see that last uh, bullet true. And this is how you set it. When you create an LPAR, you can check that box that says allow the partition to be remote restarted. Now, this option is shown on the Create Partition Wizard, uh, but with the new 850 HMC, it's also, uh, this box is shown on the Enhanced GUI, and you can set it via the Enhanced GUI. So my suggestion for P8, any P8 or future P8 customers, this remote restart is easy to use. Just set a bit on the LPAR, and you should adopt this immediately. And in case you already have some P8 LPARs out there and you don't have the 850 HMC code, installed yet, 
you can uh, go and change this uh, capability via the HMC command line, and here's the command line to do it with. And this last uh, two charts are talking about some of the new features of the HMC that GAs uh, that ships in May of 2016, and it's the HMC level 885. And uh, you're going to be able to do cross um, HMC remote restart, so you can have two different HMCs managing different sets of servers and do a remote restart from one HMC to the other HMC. Uh, so that gives a, a lot of flexibility there. Uh, the, the second bullet here, the remote restart with no connection to the system. This is the new feature in 850 HMC code, like where the server actually is completely crashed. You know, it has no connection or my absurd, absurd example of it being thrown out the window and crashing to the uh, street outside. You don't have any connection to that system anymore to do remote restart. Uh, you can do remote restart. You can do LPM between P7 and P8 now with SRR turned on. That was not uh, available before. Now you can go back and forth between the two uh, architectures with that bit turned on. And in the enhanced UI, there are new templates for simplified remote restart. And uh, you can also uh, enable and disable simplified remote restart via the enhanced GUI. You cannot uh, enable disable simplified remote restart from the classic GUI, only from the enhanced GUI. And now they're going to do auto cleanup on the source system after successful remote restart, which if you knew more about remote restart, you'd understand that. And uh, you can also do some user overrides now, like for shared processor pool and virtual fiber channel mappings. And this last little chart is some videos I've made and I've put out in YouTube, but I've um, uh, IBM allows me to uh, customize URLs, so I've actually put some uh, shor uh, shorter URLs here for you to use. Uh, so you can go to ibm.biz slash SRR tool and see a video of uh, using SRR with the automation tool. There's one where I did a sort of a funny video riding around uh, Austin, Texas, and so you can see me and all my bicycling glory, which isn't much. No worries with the Tour de France of me uh, uh, beating anybody there. And then I also have uh, uh, some other videos out there, but the last video I have in here is about the LPM automation tool in general, and, uh, and you can look at that. So thank you very much.